one and all. So, I was hoping today's video was going to be the conclusion of the front left hand wheel station in Saxon. Unfortunately, we've run into a slight problem. Uh, nothing serious, but it is going to delay that video. So, I put together a few other videos, shorter videos, of stuff we've done on the Saxon over the last few months. Uh, I put them together into this video, so I'm hoping you're going to enjoy it. Grab yourself a cup of tea and sit back and relax. Hi, I'm Ross, and you're watching Combat Cars. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. So this is the front towing eye off the Saxon. It was fitted with a standard NATO hitch front and back. The idea wasn't so much that it could tow a trailer, although it could tow a trailer, but it was fitted with a recovery bar about eight foot long. And the idea was that you could attach it to the back of a Saxon and to the front of another Saxon and either do a tandem tow or a recovery or uh, tow a broken down vehicle or something like that. So this was the one off the front. It was missing the locking mechanism. I managed to get hold of one of those. It was seized. So I previously disassembled all this, sandblasted it, greased it up, primed it and undercoated it. Today I'm just going to fit this back onto the towing eye and then fit the towing eye to the front of the vehicle. Let's crack on with that. New locking nuts here to go with the original bolts, and then I have the safety pins put on as well. So let's go get this put on the vehicle and see what it looks like. That's it. There should be a locking pin in here to lock this in place, stop it turning. This is the locking mechanism for this, and that goes through an eye here and then slots through there. I'm not going to put that on just yet. I'm just going to get a bit of paint on this now and finish it off. And that'll be that. Okay, the next job I want to do with the Saxon is 
to fit this air tank. A bit of prep work to do before I do that. Very lucky to find this. Found this on, on eBay and it just so happened to be one of the ones I was missing. Uh, the other two are standard tanks. This one has a lot of extra fittings and fixtures and yet to know and find out where everything goes, what goes to each area. The first thing I want to do is fit this here. This is the self bleeder or self drainer. So that fits onto the bottom on this on this fitting here and it comes with a, a fitting and all. So I'm going to do that and then I have to study some photographs and some manuals and drawings and see which way around this tank goes. I know it goes the drainer goes to the bottom, so it'll hang from there. But I don't know if that's the front or if that's the front. Anyway, once I've that ready, then I have these brackets. These brackets will go onto the hull of the vehicle and hold the thing in, in place. And I was missing one, so this is the original with a bit of foam on it. So this is the one I made, so I have to put a bit of foam on that. And then the tank will sit in like that, and then the brackets will go on top. Like that. Right, first things first is to fit this self drainer onto the tank, and then, then we can take a look at photographs and stuff and see where we're going from there. Okay, so I think the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to put this into the vise, clamp it in the vise, screw in the the fitting, the adapter, and then I'm going to screw the tank onto it, so we'll see if that works anyway. I'll just take this bung out. Okay. So that should thread into that. Put a bit of PTFE tape on there. Um, just gently in the vise. tight enough I'd say. That should do. There we go. I think that's about as tight as I want to get it. So this is a diagram of the plumbing for the air. So there's three air tanks. One, two, three. And then these are the the masses, brake master cylinders with the air tanks attached to them. And then this is the air tank for the diff lock. That's the diff lock solenoid. So the air tank we're concerned with is this one up here. This is the one that was missing and this is the one we're doing now. Okay, there we go. So you can see here, there's three pipes coming off the back. This one here at the top left goes up to this connection here, which is for the airline to pump the tires. Uh, this one here comes from the compressor via that thing there, which is a regulator, I think. And then that's your main line there, which also goes to the compressor. So it's the main tank or the first tank to get filled by the compressor around. So the, the diagram is facing, orientated as though you're in the vehicle facing forward. So this would be the back of the tank. So there's our air tank. And the three points, there's two points on the front, one on the bottom and three here. So the one on the bottom we know is for the self-drainer. 
One of the two at the front is for a pressure release valve. So that would make this the back of the tank for the three inlets. So that's for the compressor, that's for the airline, and that's for the compressor. So that would make this the back of the tank. So that's how we orientate. Okay, so this is the engine bay. We're at the front of the vehicle looking back. As you can see, it's changed a little bit from when you seen it last. We have some pipes here coming from the driver's compartment that would go under the engine. Those there are the brake light switches, those two. This one is a low pressure warning switch. There's your air tank for the diff locks. That's one of the diff lock solenoids. And these are the two lower tanks. This one was original, which I cleaned up and painted. That's what I bought. And then the tank that we're gonna fit goes up above this on this side wall here. So that's the one we needed to know where it was. I wanna clean up these threads here and then we're gonna mount the air tank. Ah, oh, they're the two easy ones. <laughs> so I've cleaned off all the threads. So Okay, this is one of the split rims off the Saxon. As you can see, the wheel was welded onto the hub. So I'm going to try and clean up all these wells and see if I can recover the little chamfer there and clean them up a good bit. You can see I tried to do some already there. So we'll see how this works out. We'll get them cleaned up and primed and then I can paint them up and hopefully assemble the wheels. Some of them aren't too bad actually. I think there's only three really ropey ones. Let's see what we can do about those. It's the wee chamfer that you want to worry about I suppose because that's where the wheel nut goes in.
that'll do. That's that bit. Right, well that's scratched the crap out of the wheels. It's actually not in fully yet. So. That's 35 PSI in a split rim. <laughs> and it didn't fly apart and kill me. Happy days. Right, that'll do. Okay, this is the last Saxon wheel to be assembled. We'll see how this goes. I'm not gonna put it on video. I'll just show you the finished result when I have it done. Okay, one done. It's worth noting just that this particular rim, this wheel, it's a four piece split wheel. So it's not the really dangerous type. The really dangerous type has a, you can't actually see the locking bead. It locks inside the tire area where you can't see it. So you don't know if it's made a good connection until it's too late. 
But this particular one has a, a sort of a two-piece locking system where the ring has to lock against the rim and then the outer rim here then locks against the ring so the ring can't come. So the ring locks against the wheel and then this locks in this so as it comes out it can't go anywhere. So it's much safer than the than the uh, normal ones. Still, if you don't treat it with a bit of respect, it'll uh, it'll bite you. But that's it there. 35 psi in that at the moment. I'll just go and put that with the rest. That's those two, and the other two are hiding in there. I'll touch up the paint once the wheels are fitted because the lug nuts they'll be all chipped and that as well so anyway that's it